Are we going to run into issues with galling and not having a cushioning effect with our billet titanium connecting rods? So galling works by having two typically metallical surfaces that are rubbing against each other and there are multiple things that affect these. So what type of lubrication you have between the surfaces, how hard the, how hard the materials are, uh, also what the solubility is between the two different materials and uh, yeah, temperature. There are multiple different uh, things that factor into this. Uh, but uh, one, you need to have surfaces that are rubbing against each other to uh, have galling. And for the Hell engine that these connecting rods are designed for, the rods don't contact anything on the side. They are uh, piston guided. So we do have some small potential for the titanium rod top here to, to rub against the uh, piston. The load there should be small and uh, titanium to aluminum galling should hopefully not be an issue. We'll see what happens. But there should be plenty of lubrication regardless and a low load in that location. So hopefully not an issue. Uh, we do have bushings, of course, so the piston pin will not uh, gall to the titanium rod. They're not in contact with each other. On the crankshaft side, yeah, like the titanium rod is not going to gall to the crankshaft because we have a bearing in here. There's a custom, uh, custom race bearing specifically designed for this application also, by the way. Very, very nice. Uh, another potential source for galling or location for galling can be between the connecting rod bolt uh, and the uh, top half of the connecting rod here. And this helps a little bit. We're using uh, nickel alloy uh, bolts, uh, basically very, very uh, high, high strength uh, bolts with uh, very good fatigue properties. And we have test tested these so far. And of course, we're tightening these. We're not using impacts or anything like that. Like You should never use an impact for anything that is load critical or anything like that at all. It's absolutely a horrible idea. You have to tighten these by hand so that you can feel if there's any problem with the threads or anything while you're tightening it down. And of course, um, yeah, with these, uh, they, we use a, a stretch measurement to check that they are in spec. And we use a torque wrench uh, setting to, uh, we've calibrated that so that we use a torque wrench setting and then we double check with the measurement to see that we are in, in the uh, tolerance for the stretch on the rod bolts. And so far from testing, uh, doing that a few times back and forth, uh, those seem to be absolutely fine with uh, no galling issues. So happy with that. Um, then another uh, issue potentially can be between the top and the bottom half, <laughs> or the bottom and the top half, uh, I should say. Uh, this might, can actually be an issue. So we have, of course, these um, serrated teeth here profile to keep these in place. So we're not just relying on the clamping force friction to keep these in place, which typically is more than good enough. But we want to have a, a positive connection there so that it prevents any kind of uh, vibrational movement there. Uh, this is how, how that basically looks. So we have straight serrated teeth here and this locks these in very, very well. So you can absolutely not have any movement in this direction at all, especially with the angle we're using on, on these cuts. Uh, but you do have the potential for some sideways movement. Uh, when it's clamped down, probably not much of an issue. But just to be safe in that regard, we uh, did do a slight upgrade to this design. So in addition to having the V form on the teeth, we have also done a cut profile in a V. And you can also see from this uh, cross section here that also these are cut at, cut at an angle. And this allows basically these to line up and as you can see like since both of these are in the same direction so they're not symmetrical or anything like that they're in the same direction on both sides so you can only mount these in one way which is really good this <laughs> reduces the potential of someone mistakenly putting these the wrong way around and the only way you can really mistakenly do these if you like offset these by a tooth or two or something like that but like you can't get the bolt in place there so <laughs> very sort of a uh, a safe way to design these. There's only one way these can go and attach and that is awesome. In addition, you get like zero sideways movement and it's always in the exact correct location. So this should also uh, reduce any potential vibration between these parts and also when you're tightening down the bolts for these, there's no like potential for it to be like a few tenths of a millimeter off, off sideways and with some vibration it might want to slide over under a heavy load because that can definitely cause galling issues. But with this, it's, it's guaranteed to be in the exact same location every single time you tighten it down and there's no vibration potential for it to move around really. So really happy about this and uh, 
yeah, wanted to show you guys uh, this uh, nice innovation. So the cushioning effect from the cylinder pressure acting on top of the piston, that presses down on the piston pin, and that piston pin presses down on the top of the small end of the connecting rod here, and that goes through the connecting rod to the crankshaft, of course. Uh, now you see a lot of discussions on the internet about how aluminum cushions uh, the, the combustion of forces and allows the bearings to live longer. Uh, so that would imply that you can apply a force to the top of the connect connecting rod and at some later point in time that would then be applied to the crankshaft. Now you can have these type of cushioning effects in mechanical components, it's absolutely possible to do, but it depends on their natural frequencies. Uh, so a metal part like this where you have an axial compressive loading, it doesn't really matter what metal it is, you will have a very very high natural frequency uh, in that load situation. Uh, aluminum, titanium, iron, steel, doesn't matter. And that frequency is much, much higher than what the combustion uh, chamber like uh, pressure ramp rates are, are during combustion. And that unfortunately rules out any form of like cushioning effect. It's not a thing. Uh, however, there is still uh, definitely benefits, uh, typically where you will see uh, aluminum rods being much better on the uh, bearings compared to steel rods that are being used uh, past their design uh, forces tip, uh, also. So with aluminum being much lighter weight, if you compare, for instance, uh, pictures from aluminum connecting rods to steel connecting rods, you will see the aluminum rods are very, very thick around the big end bearing. And that really increases the, geomet the, the geometrical uh, stiffness of it quite a lot. And especially on valve overlap, where you have the mass of the piston and the piston pin pulling up on the connecting rod, uh, you don't end up with this like like pinching effect as much with an aluminum rod compared to a steel rod typically. And this is something of course we have taken into consideration with the titanium rod we've designed. Uh, we've done uh, FEM studies on this, how much it flexes in, what type of load situations. And we were able to fit this so <laughs> if you can see here for instance we do have a slight curvature here to the top and this is to be able to fit in the uh, cylinder bore. So there's like a half a millimeter extra space here to be able to fit the connecting rod through the cylinder bore. And I'm really happy about that. So that allows us to use a straight split. So you will see some connecting rods where that doesn't work. So you have to have like an angled split to be able to fit it down through the, through the uh, cylinder bore. And uh, yeah, that is really bad from a, load, from a load bearing capability from the connecting rod. It makes it much heavier and, and the uh, split surface just much worse. So we're very happy that we were, we were able to fit this uh, down through the cylinder and allow assembly of the engine basically. And there are also like the sideways forces. So at very high RPM, especially when you have the crankshaft uh, pulling the connecting rod sideways, basically it ends up in this uh, banana shape a little bit and this big end has this really complex flexure um, uh, shape. And yeah, the serration, for instance, are, are really important for that. So you don't end up with these sort of micro movements and you can potentially end up with galling issues and stuff like that. So, I mean, these things are related slightly. But anyway, we have taken that into consideration. Hopefully we've done our homework and everything works well.